Onivia League of Legends highlights. Add something nice and spicy, freak, for me in the last pick. I wanted to see something even spicier, like a Yone, but this is still good. I think the bands were pretty mm. solid from EG. Gwen is the worst Scion matchup out there. It does cover all these bases of the aggressive early Zin plays, and he knows he wants Ooh. to play off the flashless rise here, so he's there Flashy. for the counter. He's going for it, but you still can't stop him. There's nothing JoJo can do. The Pilly didn't kick him off. It wasn't even cast until Xerxes landed every single skill shot. Uh, they had all the information, Freak. He was Pilly walking was over sleeping. the board. I don't know where the pillar where? was, but we got a fight in the bottom side as well. Pretty good route, and they have some pretty good trades back on the Destiny. Great net backwards from the damage from, back. Uh, Vulcan about to time out. Yeah, Vulcan had been playing this, that lane a lot. Uh, just kind of a heads up, like playing off into the brush with Nautilus and saying, if you hook me, it's going to be fine. And knowing that if he's at full health, he's not going to get one shot. Now they got a trundle. Pillar. Flashing forward. They're going to catch Arrow. Doesn't have a way out. Pillar just to make sure. And the kill is handed over. Danny on the board now. Well done, EG. Really, really smart rap. Well they invested three AD carry bands plus the first pick on the AD carry. Here's the delayed uh, power no move from flash. Evil Geniuses. Slow Again. into slow into nose. He has to fight. No way out. Well done. Danny gets number two. Yep, that's why we caution against Zin with no flash. Really well done by EG again. 180 gold lead, paying back the first blood. Of course, we got JoJo's flash back up here. And yes, Danny, in fact, is rich from the 600 gold he's earned. Inspire like to do a little bit more. Still no flash back up POE for about 10 seconds. Coming back very soon, though. And now impact coming down. Xerxes is here. This could be a play, but everyone playing far enough back. Impact not going to Realm Warp coming in for the rise. Ulti's going to knock the, uh, up as well. Good Sinjo. Oh, going to go right back in the circle. Does he flash the safety? Pillar is on. Shockwave forcing it away from Jojo Pion, but they've got enough damage. Inspire back on the board now. Knocks down Xerxes a second time. Revenge has nowhere to go. Puts Yulti down, burns a stopwatch. Might not have the time for it, but maybe PoE does. Catches the trundle, tried to flash for a kill, but couldn't make it happen. PoE has the damage and doubles, and can they get more? Hasting up, almost in range for an auto attack slow. Maybe impact dice here. Does not have a way out to get flash. Just came back, I believe. And now you got to fight on the top side. PoE gets shut down. Jojo Pyung gets his overload. Picks the, the second one, and they try and go for the play on Impact, but never mind. We're yeah, back alive. We're number fight two. down here. Impact, flashless, ultiless, has a passive always. But we're fighting for the scuttle. Caitlyn left alone on the bottom side, actually. EG have, I believe, brought up Danny. He's coming up right yep. now. So Caitlyn could get free plates. What's this fight going to look like, though? It's going to be 4v5 soon. It's 4v5 soon. Will it reset? Right now, a fight come in. Danny caught out. Is he going to die, though? Runs away for his life and got it on, and Inspired finds the first kill. And JoJo gets out pretty safely. It was, sorry, it was him they were going for. Going to stay alive. Xerxes drops as well. EG winning the fight. I can't believe they took that battle. Danny showed up. It was a 5v4 in EG. I think that Immortals aren't as scared of it as as they might have been if it was a much earlier dragon, because they do have... Yeah. We know top lane is pretty low and can be a target. Plus, I just want to re-emphasize here that kind of the, the issue has been that Ryze is a very good side lane champion. Never mind, Impact is also a... Yeah. And we got the, the reinforcer coming here as well. TV showing up for revenge. A great pillar. Jumping over it there. Nice true shot barrage out of Danny. But now, can they get the rest of it? Another slow is there. He does not have flash. Also, I have ult, only the passive. So Impact will be left to die. PoE grabs the kill. Time to walk away. Xerxes gets the knock and walks out. Jojo. And this Ryze getting more money is is a very big problem for Immortals. They already know, all right, our team fights are going to be rough. You know, the front to back is right now. They've got so many problems to deal with and not a lot of answers as far as how they're actually going to win either a team fight side of this coin where since you can't go answer their five on fives setting up at these neutrals, you have to try and trade on the other side of the map, try and force uh, the other lane and get some split push advantages. So they send three members top EG side. have full health bars everywhere. Can Immortals even get out is the question. Revenge checks, grabs some move speed real quick. That's what he wants back in. Flash, great escape from Danny. Knocking for impact, will play in the front line. And looks like not a good way out. Shockwave by some time. Good ult through from the grave as well. A bit of damage back. Impact is still tanky and Vulcan. Finds the kill on a destiny. Supports yeah. on the board. To build anti-tank items. I, again, I understand it. You're going through a trundle. You're going through a scion. We've got, you know, Lord Dominic second here out of the Caitlyn. And the tough thing Most is- damage of any of the dragons. And we'll chunk him low. Um, there's no vision for Immortals to know that, and so he still has the threat. They can't cross that much. They already knocked down top lane outer turret, so, you know, what they tried to trade for dragons has been claimed. Going for tier two sounds really tough. 
And EG just keep controlling mid and zoom, not. Zoom. Killer is on. Three versus two. Good luck as TP's come in. Realm Warp as well. Arrow flashes. Arrow still goes down. Jojo Pyun finds one. And they're going to find a whole lot more. In fact, Nas couple up. Gets interrupted in the meantime. But he's still too tanky. Finds another stun. Pulled back in. Stone plate is a big shield. Shockwave on a three. Danny with a good arcane shift gets away. Inspired nearly dead. But just too tanky. Walks away with his life. be there soon. They know they have to be desperate from the side of Immortals. They know that they had to force a play there. They tried. Valiant effort, you know, the multiple flashes used, trying to get the engage, but EG just too solid. Nice rotation of the rise again. Ben just playing to EG's tune. They're happy to sit and scale and get to late game sign where the front line's better, the back line's better. And they're gonna find a little bit more now. Xerxes, you can see, loses about 20% of his health from a single Ezreal Q, and that happens every single time. Certainly does. All right, EG setting up again with a much better turn. They've got the go. Dragon Soul. Sidesteps it. Ult comes down to block some damage, and he's hopefully gonna get away for now. They can't get right back in, but as they burn out the ultis, the second half could look good on the JoJo. Isn't enough damage. The question that was flashes down, and they find him with a shot. One for one. Inspired is low, but Inspired survives. One for one. Well done to Immortals. Poe has high ability haste. Can get his spells back soon, but they found him. He's flashed, but he's rooted in place. And impacts here for more. Danny Woo! jumps in, finds the kill, chases in for more. Thank you for three extra kills, and they're in for the rest of it. Arrow left alone. Arrow can run for his life. Stop the recall. But the Immortals base cannot run. Nice dodge there from Vulcan. He's using the move speed, but he's going to go down. Arrow's trying to finish him off. He just wants to stop the recall freak. Yeah, the root was there. Couldn't land the net. And you know Vulcan's going to stop him again. <laughs> <laughs> he's well, try. it's actually inspired this time. It won't look too bad. The pillar's there, but the base is dying. Inhibitor turret is down. Inhibitor itself is gone as well. Vulcan would love to bait him in. Pillar's not up for a little bit, though, and Arrow's going to play by the wall. Uh -oh. It's a Scryer's Bloom, and here comes CP's for a bit more. So the game will not end, but Arrow <laughs> will lose his life. Pillar not timed quite appropriately. They may still get the chase down. I mean, I don't there, think there's no, yeah, there's no yeah, way out for him. It's just a question of how does he want to die? He With wants to win. die getting gold. What's your last meal? Gold, please. I would like some gold. Thank you very much. Gold. <laughs> who, knows, who knows that reference? Is that really no. old now? Austin I don't know Powers? Oh, I've seen that. It was also poorly done, so maybe. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the worst Austin Powers movies. <laughs> well, I was <laughs> referencing my another team fight victory. Yep, and there you go. Danny did um, some damage in that fight. Uh, a, a decent number right there. Put a dent into his armor. He can just back off and heal up off the war mugs. Uh, it's such a strong combination with your gargoyle stone plate because you get a massive item shield on top of your W shield. It's a good build. I'm a big fan of Warmox's Stone Plate in every single sign build. I think they're appropriate. They're pretty much optimal. And Xerxes can't get his ult in time. Danny finds the snipe. And this has got to be the base at this point. Joe just going to get low, will be stunned, but far enough away that they can't answer back onto him. Destiny flashes the safety. Double stun comes through. Danny, now legendary, jumps one. in, finds a trip, but will he get all five? Looking for the last two. The poor Revenge on his turret will get none. Health bar getting lower. He's ignited, not healing for very much. Uh -oh. And that's the stopwatch. <laughs> what a bait. Well played. Gets a kill on the board. Immortals find number five, <laughs> but they will find loss number six. EG get their fifth win of the season. Well done on the victory. <laughs> I love it. Respect the zero as the analyst desk investigated and pointed out. This is not a powerful counter pick, though. Uh, this or is Rek'Sai, but it's also a mid roam, and the mid laner went right over that scuttle. So, but take they're pushing up for the wave, getting it out the tower. So they're gonna flash with the play, cleanses it away. Will they get Johnson out? Flashes back, still knocked up by Spika. They'll trade him back on a Shen Yi, but not looking too bad. After is still alive. Spika's low. Spika almost dies the tower. He's got 100 health and two Kui's on the way. Does he land the scout of the week? He can't really go through tactical. Maybe he can. Hook is going to land. Ooh, Is it going to be enough? He trades back, but they're going to get it all the same. Meanwhile, what you're paying for this top side invade, you see Lee to start up this dragon, and Hextech will go to the side of FlyQuest. Meanwhile, Spika invading on top side. Tukui going to try to roam to the bottom side. Dragon's up in 12 seconds. As Johnson clears into the tower, Afro's gonna find Shen Yi, decent damage here where they find the rest of it, puts the W down, gonna tank damage for a while, and they're gonna save, oh, they actually burned the ulti, but it's enough to find the kill, Jose Diodo. Now on the board with number three. Pulls now. off the quick play onto Shen Yi. No flash from the Leona because they burned it last time around at the top river play, and FlyQuest 
two dragons. Yes. Kumo, can you get out of this one, though, Scott? The outplay, explosive cast, but right back in is the Ari. That's got to be everything landing. Yes, indeed. That was great by Huni. He flashed in front of the body slam, and there was nowhere else to go. One of the board for the top lane. And they've got the damage to pull off the kill because TakeOver with the roam up here to top side. All that AP damage strikes right through the extra armor. That was invested in by Kumo. Is this going to result in a lot of tower plates on top side, but it's being traded for turret plates on the bottom side? Nah, Aphromoo goes. Flash ulti, tactical out of dashes. No flash available. So now you just go right on to her. Nice stopwatch by his time. They got to reset the tower record, and it is the back in the tower. Tactical comes back into range. That is a tactical decision summoner. That is a mouth I've never seen <laughs> one. And now Shen Yi's next up. Once again, Afro pulls the aggro. He should be able to drop that tower right here, and that's kill picked up. What a tower dive from FlyQuest. What a cross map from TSM. That's, you know, well over 900 already, and anything more than two plays keeps adding to it. So yes, TSM got more gold, but now we have another look. Two and a half minutes till Dragon. Shenyi able to sidestep right at the range of Cinder Q. Well done. They find us on an Afro. Easy target. Charmed Whoa. and just does nothing. Well set up, but it's a one for one as the Leona goes down. John's left alone. Flashes away. Oh, he may just live. A double kill in. Juki finds two, and he's looking for number three. Tactical kicked right in the range. A triple, <laughs> and he's Jose! on four. Jose Cito is the big man. Quadra kill! A quadra kill for Tuki Tuki Nation! Jose! Oh my goodness, he is awake for in range. They couldn't fight for control and they get nothing out of the summon. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, TSM still hoping that the Trindomir split push is going to get them some more advantages because they're losing on the other side of the map. Takoi just bullies takeover off. Ultimate here traded for the pressure, gets the tower, gets the wave in, and it's just it's just the Trinimir pushing for TSM that is going to leverage them any sort of advantage because they lose the other two lanes worth Jeez. of like. Yeah, this one, like, the scoreboard doesn't look absurd right now, but it's going to be really absurd really, really fast. And, and you can see FlyQuest. I don't know if you'd actually trade ult for cleanse the team fight coming in 30 seconds, but a possibility. Very, very low tactical can cue it. Kills it with the Triforce. Nicely done. One for the bottom river, but can they get there in time? They are rushing Dragon ASAP. This can get burned quickly. Does Jose, Jose. get in range? He can potentially smite. He's stunned by Shen Yi, but it won't burn in time. Here comes the fight. Kicks him out of the pit. Flash ah, back 40. And Dragon is claimed by Jose Diodo. What can he do except just win the whole time? Thank you very much to get the kill on Shen Yi. Fly quest own everything. Tuki. <laughs> Dookie, no teleport, so they're just Cast poking around. The best they could hope for would be some sort of pick or steal, and they give up on that. Yep. Kumo sitting over the wall, has cast, once again has body slam, checks all the brushes, no one's here. Thank you very much, Baron claimed. They're going to share some turret gold. Afro's going to even get his cut. Thank you very much. Turret goes down. Gotta track the movements toward mid, but top lane tier two, pretty much a formality here. Yes, sir. And the Teemo emotes start coming out. It's cool to see. You know, we got RTS spam, uh, RTS players who spam clicking their workers. You know, you got some people who just hit all the F keys, look at their lanes. You know, let's just hit the emote wheel. Recruiting huh? does keep you warmed up, um, but man, can uh, can definitely be another cause for some of the it's most- like that. <laughs> it looks like that, more or less. It's pretty solid. Anyways, back to this game. FlyQuest with this ocean trip. Did he see him? He's going to almost one-shot Shenyi. And the stopwatch is there as well. Zeri dives in. And oh, will Zeri dive out? Oh, you don't have to get right back out. Health bar's low. Can he find the ulti? It's Kumo getting one from over the wall. And back in for number two. Goodbye to the bottom lane. And TSM going right back where they started with another L on the scoreboard here. Fly will just gain life uh, as he's tanking it. No problem. Down 120. Darn. And one more ability, and he'll gain it all back. Yeah, true. <laughs> And here we go. As long as you can damage someone, you get a little bit for minions, you get a lot more for champions, and he's back to full, ready to go for the Nexus turret. Shen Yi's back alive, but Shen Yi doesn't have an ultimate, and that means turret number one will fall. Fair enough. Let's get to that dragon. FlyQuest started up. TSM, as you said, this is their last hope in the game. Make the team fight happen. Steal away this Elder Dragon. You get an objective bounty if you can just... Oh, it's the leash, and he's just gone right away. Another one in for Jose Diodo. Burns a stopwatch, and the stuns gets right back over the jump. And now going to go for round two. They might kill the least in, though. He's burning down. He will die. Well, the Nahuni finds one on the board. Jumps back over. Looks for Tukui. Can he get him? They're trying. And they do find it in the end. Not bad for a team fight. TSM go two for two. However, Ever. Everyone is outside of the pit, and unless Shen no pulls a miracle, for they don't have a smite. So if any TSM member could get closer, they would have had a chance at a steal. But Kumo comes to make get that counter kill. 
And makes it three three on the map. And now with Elder Dragon claimed, it's going to be an easy road. Good job, an uncontestable Baron. Oh. This is the last inhibitor turret, and it is now dead. FlyQuest have complete reign over the base. We'll see if they can take over more than just the enemy mid laner. Is who are you going to wait for his next play? Kumo shoves in mid lane. Have Shepard that one with the Baron buff. Should be pretty easy here. Next inhibitor to fall. And at what point can TSM fight? Maybe at a Nexus turret because of the power. Elder Dragon also timing out in 20 seconds. I think it's good to wait until that happens. But Huni gonna lose all his cooldowns. Has to bring the ulti to not get killed by the Elder Dragon, but they're gonna get the next fight. They get sucked into a battle. Not in front of turrets, not in front of anything, but just oh. to get the kills. Not gonna dive into the fountain. Looks for the cast, looks for a kill. There you go. Clean them up. TSM are sent back to the fountain, and they won't even respawn in it anymore because they're all gonna drop. They're all gonna die. One traded back, but the Nexus falls. FlyQuest takes down TSM. FlyQuest rack him up and Jose knocks him down. Quadra yeah. kill for Lee Sin, steals away. The difficult thing is that it is a Gragas. We already know how Gragas neutralizes yep. the trend, but at least you would have one 3 one split. It is a blue side clear for Santorin, and he will reveal himself Ooh. in mid gank first. And course he already, 3v1 Abadaga. Your days are numbered, and that number is zero and one first. <laughs> Blood goes through for Bjergsen. Thanks for the 3v1, everybody. Woo! Wave. Wave of course, already burned one TP, but He's on that ward's mail, Kobe. That is an item that makes it really hard to kill you. Repeat gank freak. There's no flash on this rise. There comes the first bit of damage. Flash jump in. He does sidestep W, but he does not sidestep the death ray. And Bjergsen gets kill number Information two. Information denial is is one of the biggest things that can that can help win you these cross map plays. Here we are. Oh. They are going to commit to it. Realm Warp goes out too. They find who he behind the squad. Flash going to get the stun. And Bjerg says enough. Harold's going to be claimed. They're behind the thieves as well. And a lot of damage comes through for Victor, but they will trade him down. Trin has ulti still. How about the team fight though? Rise down. Victor is the same. Both teams now missing a mid laner. 4v4. Harold encloses in the drone. I doubt it though. And well, here we go. What did Jat say? He said if Hunt Thieves get first dragon, they win the game. Not going to happen. Team Liquid going to claim it. Team Liquid want a bit more. 100 these. Blast Cone over, though, to get Spotted. some alone time. Big damage on to Leona. Hansama gets away. Who he? Who he is dead. Who he's going to find a stun. Cleanse, maybe not needed, but who cares? Actually, can they even chase this one down? The reboards are not too far away. Yeah. Laser going to land. The shields in the flash. Follow. And Bjergsen gets kill number three. Nice step to block the rocket. No casualties for Team Liquid. 21-4. See if they can correct this game. Everybody going up to someday's lane with that hole breaker, trying to push down this tower. Um, yes, everybody else is near him, so you won't get the full value out of it, but that's enough to brute force this trade. They leave Hansama once again down on bottom side. Hansama able to push through that tower, push through the extra wave here, all the way up into secondary, and 100 Thieves trying to just do cross map at the moment. Oh, mid lane tower will go down. 100 Thieves is going to find their second. Gordon J not going to be in range. Smite from Closer and a decent team, but afterwards, look at this one as well. And it is going to be the commitment to the bottom side here. They do have teleport ready on Whippo, but he's up at the turret, and they're going to channel now. Committed. That's gone in, but they're going to get him in a couple of seconds. Now he's there. Zeri puts the ulti on, tries to cut away. Stays alive so far. Asan Sama, who he cutting away? Staying alive now as well. Rocket gets not a whole lot. FBI flashing back into the pit. Whippo holding some space. Something going right back in, though. Can they get this one? Centaurin is low. They go all the way to the back line. Ulti's on, and Zeri falls. Two to one so far as Rise opens up for another. Going to go for another. And yes, it's Core JJ now dropping as well. A double for Abadaga. And this is a team fight going the way of 100 Thieves. They roll more forward. Can he get the CC? Yes, they root him in place. And Bjergsen is going to drop as well. Revenge has been and found 100 Thieves crush the team fight. play. Team Liquid moving up into Fog. Harold is down, 100 Thieves pick it up. Core JJ tries to initiate up the middle. His ult goes on to push this bottom side all the way into tower. They want one more minion wave for, for uh, someday here. So trying to just screen for him, allow him to take out that cannon wave. It might cost them though. They're gonna dive in into Core JJ. Rocket to land for a bit of damage. Will they get the kill? Oh, it's gonna be Santorin building some space. Ulti comes down, but left alone and they're gonna drop. A good stun towards closer. Low health bars. Hunter Thieves may not be able to keep this fight going. They're gonna get one for one again. It's a two for two overall fight. And Abadaga will be stunned and Take will down. be killed. This team fight going really well. Team Liquid plus one. Maybe many more to come. Here we go. Mid lane wave under fire. Team Liquid gonna push this one. Will they get much of the tower is the question. They've still got most of the wave. A flash play. Whippo just spots him out of fog and deletes one. Under the tower is gonna be enough. Turret will fall. That fight is going to be easy. Thank you. We'll take both bot laners. Two for one deal. Plus the tower. It's a fire sale on gold towards Team Liquid. Whippo, Gragas engaged around this mid turret freak. Where have I seen this before? <laughs> he finds another one. He played it. Honestly, this is going to be very tricky for Closer to try and steal. 100 Thieves, only three members up. 
And Team Liquid have the turn! What a play, Corey today finds the team fight. They're gonna get everybody. This is going to be a complete crush right now. Stopwatch burn, jump over the wall. Well done by Closer, but they will still catch up. Adaga doesn't have a good way out. Slow one more time. Santorin claims another kill. It is not a Baron, but it is a kill. Still pushing. Team Liquid team fights getting out of hand, but 100 Thieves still have Trindamir and Rise free. They still have possibilities to For the victor, Void Staff is up next. Kind of covering his bases and on the way downwards as they will look to spot Whippo and can they kill him 2v1? Double Root is in, good damage, but he's Baron. only so tanky. He's armor Baron stacked, so Rise can burn him, but yes, on the other side, we watch for that one. They will try to find that kill. Heals up, and there we go. There's the burn. TP is up for the rise. When will he show? They chase them off the Baron. They complete their double split pusher kill on to Blitz. Leonos, that is actually several, or actually just a very big tool missing now from that toolbox. And it's all Fog of War there. They've got to try to find it. They know what's going on. They're going to find that route. They know she's a target, and she's going to get burned down. But can they trade back for JJ? No, he's too tanky. The locket is there. And he's gonna be just fine, but a kick flash finds one more. Hansama may just die, they get him, but it's gonna be traded back by Santor. And so, is it enough now for the Trinity to dive in? They kick in, FBI, beautifully done, but it's not gonna be enough. Something gets right back out, but they do finally get that kill. Jinx is down, but Trin's back for Whoa! more. Road work to safety. Whippo cannot land the body slam, and someday's running for his life. Whoa! Abadaga just throws the Q wide, and can he can trade back on Santora. No, he drops the aggro. The tower dive works. Beautifully done by Team Lake. Oh, sidestepped one, missed on a route of target, but wouldn't have killed him anyway. It's important to dodge those things. Who he looks for the play, can't find it. There was there a re-engage. Centauron wants in. Be careful, Abadaga slow, but gets out. Centauron finds the way to the slow. Gonna dive in here. Will it kill who he is the question? As Lisa gonna jump around, but gets knocked up and can't get much more done. Hansama and his one going against Abadaga is just fine. A route onto Santorin goes right back in towards closer. It's gonna be enough as he Gordrick is back up the health, and now Ward have to safety to the least sin. Very low, gonna be stunned up, and they find the Trindamir kill. He already burned Ulton, still dropped down, but they trade back the jungler. Still the zap on a Bjergsen, but Abadaga, nowhere to go. Has a flash. Can he even burn it? Will it matter? And he's going to drop two to one. The team fight again. Team Liquid win it. A story of two immunities. And this dragon as well. Soul point will be their rewards. The margins of these fights is pretty small, but now it is just ballooning for Team Liquid. It is going to be three dragons. Pick out there by Whippo. It'll be fun to watch as they continue to fight for the top spots here. I'm gonna try. It's a slow, but he's gonna jump in and go for a lot. Obviously, a ton of mobility on this champion. Rise now I on the way as well. First. Whippo's got to be a pretty reliable target for this one. The question is the cross map, because you can see TL are running that way as fast as they can. Whippo tries to buy as much time as possible. As wide as he is, they can't see where the rest of the team is going. And can they get it to happen? Closer's on the way out. They burn this one. They can burn the TP now. As Abadaga, can he show up? 6k health on the Baron. They know what's going on. Rise ulti. Uh, or, yeah, Ooh, it's a rocket. Not going to kill it. Spice going to be claimed. Yes. As the TP finally comes across, Victor ult was burned to kill it. Offer 1,000 in the Red Bull Baron power play. It's going to be 1,800 when this turret falls down. Pretty safe there, can play it at max range. Shoot out the Triforce Qs, not gonna be an issue. Someday he poaches away one of his own camps. Is like, this one the 100 Thieves can fight? Looking pretty risky. Well, they're um, going for it now. Gragas is far. Gragas does have TP. Will it be enough for them? They dive in, looking for the first kill. Leona is tanky. I mean, I can say for the sideline, but first, it's Zeri getting one for nothing. Diving in for a bit more. They can't kill anyone, though. It's two for nothing, and Han Sama will oh, knock down with another again. A double kill, a dive on the wall. That is oh. going to be the clean ace. 100 Thieves tried when Bubba went top, and they failed. Team Liquid, Bud Light Ace, five for row into the base. What a rivalry. Team Liquid will end their losing streak versus 100 Thieves. And yes, sir, Freak, those Nexus turrets don't stand a chance. <laughs> White flag comes out. You know it's over. 32 minutes, the, the time for every game we've played so far today. A banger for sure. The barns have been burned. The slobber's been knocked. The Nexus has been killed. And Team Liquid alone in first. And eight. Thinking about this grave. Graves pick. This was not an instant. Oh, you got Nar. We're taking Graves. They thought about it and they decided to go. A lot Could of times, likes to grab himself a nice early pickaxe or even an iron spike whip if possible. And especially given the fact that you can expect probably their lanes to have shoved for the majority of of the early phase, and then you can try and show up at a half health target, flash on top, and then find a kill. Nautilus, no flash now. If you land yep. on poke with your Ezreal Karma, maybe you can find a kill there. Uh, it's it's the mid lanes which is the most least interactive. Hold on. Ooh. Okay. No wallop, but Licorice flashes right back in and he gets first blooded. 1v1. Summit wins. He's spilling over to mid lane as well as Winsome has moved up. Winsome seeing if there's a play to be made on a Blaze Olive. Nice dredge line. Nice follow up. Nice kill from Cloud9. They even get the flash there at the very end and take him the down. Boulder hitting him, but he flashed right into the boulder anyway. Yeah. So it didn't uh -oh. end up dodging that boulder. 
And then you can see Blaber delayed hitting him with the devastating charge just in case he was going to dash. They pick oh. up another kill. Oh no, Licorice. This, these are side. All this pre six. The one saving grace for Golden Guardians, I guess, during this is your Balling still has shove and can try and start the dragon stacking. Well, here comes Cloud9, and they're going to end up stealing it away. And they might just grab themselves some kills on top. Going to be one for one here at the very beginning. Blabber tries to back on out, but the Chaos Storm is still ravaging his health bar. Double kill back over to a Blaze Olive, and the Golden Guardians strike back. Berserker's below 100 HP, gets back over the wall and barely stays alive. Fudge can't do the same. Golden Guardians, they may have lost the Drake, but they'll win the fight. ...by Cloud9 as Golden Guardians won the fight. So let's see what Blabber wants to do up here in the top side. Oy. He'll be going after Licorice, gets the devastating charge. Licorice with the flash out, but the onslaught of shadows finds its way in. They give the kill over to Summit, and there's no way home except a black and white screen. Still losing their top lane turret. Well, the top lane turret being gone, also going to have that Rift Guard, looks like getting the charge into the second one. But the Drake they will not have the control. They will yeah. not be the ones making them face check you, and then you get to land a bunch of pokes. Um, you're going to have to hope that they try and punish you and you get out safely. Well, talking about getting out safely, man, not when the Nautilus ulti comes over the wall. Ole gets picked off, and Cloud9 pick up another kill. Yeah. Total control over the pit. The Rift Herald's going to be summoned up instead. Cloud9 are saying, all right, Drake doesn't matter. It'll never get to Soul. We're just going to trade you for direct gold instead. Harold takes the mid lane tier one, which goes back by all the little bits and pieces. It's death by a thousand cuts. A blue buff here, a farm advantage there, a slight 1v1 outplay that ends up snowballing into a major advantage because Summit's got it calculated. All these different things. Uh -oh. And now a TP's coming in. Licorice is getting caught, and Cloud9's decided to engage. Fudge finds the back line to the TP, and lost is lost indeed. Ole tries to escape as Pride Stalker goes into the back line and finds a kill, but Cloud9's cleaning up the whole damn team. Double kill for Berserker, three dead for only the support of I mean, basically every man for himself Fail. at that point. Like, this is a nice idea. Before the dragon actually spawns, pick the fight early. Licorice had rotated down from the bot side to try and make this one happen, Story. but... But, but we don't it's mention it for no reason. He's going to show up later and serve a very important purpose, and that's what he's doing. It's Chekhov's Berserker. The fact that he's there, there will be a thing for him to do later, but he's not going to be the main character. And now, cool down, you can see the thing. You can watch it in real time. There it goes. Yep. It's cooling down. Where's the ulti? Oh. It's around here. Okay, cool. There it is. It's back up. Uh, <laughs> it was really nice to just chunk out Licorice, though, because it allowed them to grab that bot lane turret. Flabber just heals off the camps, and they're right back to it. Ooh, and Ole is not as durable as Licorice is, so he's just going to get exploded here in this one. Cloud9 take out the enemy support. They got a 5v4 man advantage. They get the Chaos Storm out of the victor. They will do a true Metal Gear Solid impersonation, steal away a soul, and then somehow 1v5 Whoa. his way out. It's not happening, for, man. For Cloud9 as well, do you really need an Ocean Dragon right now? Like, don't even go to it. Just, yeah, just, just keep the pressure there. up, take this inhibitor, then move everyone topside, and, and Golden Guardians are stuck in their base. Yeah, Licorice is stuck against the inhibitor, and gallop, <laughs> gallop! Here comes the horse, baby. Blabber picks it up as Summit did most of the work. And there goes inhibitor number two here in bottom lane. A Blaze Olive moves forward, tries to scare away the Cloud9 top laner, but he'll only be able to push him back after his objective is already complete. The remainder of Cloud9 will move up into the top side here. Still a 5v4 overall fight. Blaver's coming in, he's ready to go. A Blaze Olive in some trouble. Blaver's going to soak up the attention of everybody else, and then they'll turn around and kill a Blaze Olive oh, right oh after. Oh my god. Summit with the fadeaway boomerang. Cloud9 made this one look so easy, Mark. They'll clean up those Nexus turrets. Golden Guardians' remaining two players are just stuck inside the fountain. Summit gives up his life for the first time today to do a fountain dive. The only thing that can kill him is the 999 true Ooh. damage laser. And Cloud9 keeps it up, baby. They get the win. They get ups for the side of CLG. And the cannon does get locked in for Jenkins in the yes, top sir. lane two. Big does the Caitlyn Lux lead need to be to justify this pick? I would say right now is okay, given that this is the timing window that we're talking about exploding when Corky gets his package. They took an interesting reset there to get the Gale Force on Neo before this dragon. That's one of those situations I'd actually rather... Oh, hold on, dive coming in. They are going in, and they are going in all the way. Boom! He gets resurrected, and Blue tries to get out, but the bomb is already stuck on his head. Contracts goes in. First blood over to Palafox. 
And CLG ain't done yet. Onslaught of Shadows comes out. Uh -oh. Contracts, I don't know what the hell's going on, buddy. You better get out of town. Here comes the ace in the hole, and Hecarim's back in the glue factory. Dignitas makes it a one-for-one -one trade for Dig. You can see it's so easy for Volibear to solo this one down. The healing that he gets from his W just means he's never going to die against the Tech Tech Drake anyway. Neo and Biofrost, so much control down here. Oh, oh no. Kamehame hot damn. Biofrost and Neo just putting in the work here with these picks. Now I would say the Drake for his team. He's the one who set up the dive in bottom that ended up going their way. Things are all right. Yeah, I mean, if there's anyone who ever doesn't care about falling behind, it's River. Contracts on the Hecarim does still want to get some kills in his back pocket. Contracts going in after Fake God, who sidesteps away from the zap of the Jinx. Onslaught of Shadows comes out. Fake God still trying to fight this out in the 1v2. Nearly kills Contracts, but close ain't enough. Tries to get out the last rocket, hits him, but it's not quite there. <laughs> Fake God makes it a one-for-one one trade. Makes it a one-for-one. One. Out of position as Dignitas was setting themselves up, and now with Dig begin the Drake with Blue having that package like you're talking about. There's just no way. Real, if you're using a real cheat code, I am just making stuff up. It's called the, the Konami code. It's like one of the OG cheat codes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right, that's right. I remember that now. I still don't know if I got it right, but I'm going to pretend like I did as Palafox just gets uh, bit by River here as River's trying to stop the invade coming out from CLG. Lux Laser finds Palafox. Corky Rocket over the wall means they're going to proc that revive. Contract still trying to stay in a fight a little bit, but a TP's coming out. Dignitas still on the chase. Contracts oh, no. running the opposite way. River with the flash over the wall. Meanwhile, Palafox just gets shot to pieces over the wall. Contracts is still trying to get out. Biofrost is right there, ready and waiting. Contracts, run, buddy, run. Where's he going? He's Down delaying Pal the inevitable, I believe. Here comes the bear. Up. Oh, oh, what's he can fight him? What the? Okay, there we go. All right. All right, still pretty well done by Contracts, who wasted a little bit of time there uh, for Kennen to work down the turret in the top lane, but Dignitas answering the bot side, picking up those two kills. CLG trying to find little plays to slow Dignitas down. It's just not working out for them. Well done there. For End up working out. Oh, boy. They're, they're trying their hardest to stay online, but here we go. Luger in potentially some trouble. Oh, flash from Biofrost, and they're still going to get the Binding Rivers there for the follow-up almost. And Fake God with the flash over the wall. Q1, Q2, nothing else to it. Over 4,000 gold. Dignitas are now on soul point. So now I've got to put you in the hot spot again. No. And ask the tough quest. CLG's grouped up as a five-man death ball in mid. But it doesn't really matter too much because it's Dignitas with a control ward in the Baron's pit, and they're starting this one up as a two-man with River and Fake God. Meanwhile, Neo and Biofrost might just get dove here in the mid lane. There's the Jenkins engage I was talking about. There's the flash. Ulti slicing Maelstrom gets it done. But the entire time, as CLG are now pinging onto the Baron pit, they're saying, hey, guys, we just killed mid lane. We just killed their bottom laners. We should go take up. Oh, what just happened? Baron gets snuck by Dick past his own control ward. Needs to get in position here for the smite. Where is CLG's initiation going to be? Blue's already killed. Boom! Oh, no, CLG. It ain't looking good in the ocean. Soul on top of it. Oh, it's looking bad, my friends. Blue takes a little bit of damage from the Super Mega Death Rocket, but Luger's stuck in the wrong place, and CLG is stuck in the wrong spot in this game. 6,000 gold lead, Baron buff, Ocean Soul, you name it, they got it. Dig the Toss Party Bus is going 90 miles an hour down mid lane. Yeah, they're going to keep this one rolling, going to be able to grab the mid inner turret, most likely the inhibitor turret as well. 30 seconds before Luger is back up. CLG just did not have an angle into that fight with all the traps that were put down. Jenkins using his flash in that previous engage, and so that allowed Dignitas to set up around that objective, win the fight, and now potentially even win the game. They're not backing off. They don't have side waves anywhere nearby, so they're saying, all right, let's use what we got, and what we got is a volley bear ulti on the two Nexus turrets. First one's already dead. They're going to take out the top laner now as well. Jenkins didn't have a chance to fight back. Contracts coming back out of the fountain, but the Nexus is done, and Dignitas take the win. Dignitas end the game off that single fight. Unbelievable.